Just when you thought there was no more royalty free music. Hello everybody, my name is Sarkis Bakalian and I am the host for the Armenians podcast. I don't know why I'm talking like this. Stop it. I am extremely excited for today's episode. Why? Because. Don't you just hate it when people say because give me a reason because we have a very special guest very special guest equals very special episode that's magic for you so it goes without saying that you should definitely stick around for this one maybe a little longer than the other episodes but it's worth it trust me on the last podcast towards the end we asked you a question which pro wrestler's biological father was armenian we had a the undertaker b triple h c aj styles or d Seth Rollins. The answer is drum roll, please. What kind of drum is that? D. Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins' father left at a very young age, so his stepfather, who happened to be Hispanic, was the one that raised him. The more you know. So the next question this time around is: Is Kim Kardashian fluent in Armenian? Yes or no? But on today's podcast, we're going to be talking about the best Armenian cartoons. Now, there aren't that many cartoons out there, but there are some really good ones. And some of these are my favorites. I grew up with them. I love it. I love it. So the first one we're going to talk about is called The Gathering of Mice, or as it's called in Armenian, Makneri Jorova. It came out during 1978 during the Soviet times. And essentially, it's about a group of mice that have a meeting to figure out who's going to put a bell around the cat's neck. This cat is always sneaking into their home without them noticing. So in order to counteract that, they want to put a bell on his neck so they can be alerted when he shows up. This one is a little darker in imagery compared to the other cartoons, but I think it has some fun animation that's still worth checking out. The next one we're going to be talking about is called Kaj Nazar. Now, Nazar in Armenian means timid or shy. And the story for this one is about a man named Nazar who happens to be a very boastful, very proud person, but he's too afraid to act on his pride. And he kind of just shies away from it in a cowardly way. Came out in 1980. But this story proves that there's always some luck out there. Next cartoon! Now the next one we're going to be talking about is called Anahit. Now this is a more recent one. It came out in 2014. The story for this one is about a king, King Vachagan, who falls in love with a country girl named Anahit. And the king wants to marry Anahit, but Anahit refuses until he learns a special skill. And that special skill is to learn how to weave carpets. Uh, and this happens to be a full feature length movie. The animation for this one is really impressive. So it's free on YouTube if you want to check it out. It's called Anahit. Check it out. Yeah, check it out. Check it out. All right, moving on. <laughs> the next cartoon we're going to be talking about is called Anban Hurin or Lazy Huri in English. This one is about a girl who's extremely lazy, but her mother wants to marry her off. So what she does is tell everybody in the village that they're living in that she's hardworking. You know, she's this, she's that, pretty much showing off to everyone and lying that she's this perfect girl when in fact she's not. This one is also a recent one. It came out in 2017. And this one has a lot of music in it. It's kind of, it kind of feels like a musical in a way. Moving on to the next one. <laughs> this one is one of my favorites near and dear to my heart. It's called Pui Pui Muknik and came out in 1971. It's about this mouse who lives in the jungle, starts off singing, and then he notices a coconut just fall out of nowhere. And he sees the coconut. He doesn't know what it is. So he tries to get into the coconut. Coconut. And when he does get into the coconut, he starts drinking and eating everything that's inside it. And then he gets fat and he's not able to get out. But I'll let you figure out what happens afterward. But I love this one. This one is a classic. I grew up with this one. And the music is just so catchy. Now, this one is my favorite. I grew up watching this so many times as a kid. This one is called Gutnavats Yeras. I might have mentioned it in the last podcast because Ruben Hachverdian, who happened to be a children's songwriter, wrote songs for this particular cartoon. It's about a little girl who lives with her grandfather and the grandfather suffers from insomnia, so he's not able to sleep. And thinking about that, thinking how sad that is, the girl falls asleep and she has this dream where she walks into the painting in her bedroom. It's a very heartwarming story and it's something that'll stay with me forever. But if you ever get a chance, please watch that whole thing. It's so freaking good. So those are the cartoons that I thought I would mention. Are there any that I missed? Maybe I missed one or two. I don't know. You gotta let us know. You gotta tell us. All right? 
go to at 4D underscore legacy. That's the number four, letter D underscore legacy on Instagram or Twitter, all right? Or if you want to email us, you could do that. That's fine. No problem. Info at 4DLegacyContent.com. All right, do it, do it. Now today we have one amazing story to share with you and it's in regards to that special guest that I mentioned earlier and that is none other than Christina Ayanyan, Miss Boston herself. I reached out to her because I saw this amazing work that she's doing and that she has been doing for a while. Now during this COVID-19 crisis, she has created a food donation drive that has been getting attention and praise from around the world and she's been helping people in her community in Boston, helping out the, the network of hospitals that are there. She's been doing a lot of great work. I wanted to highlight what she's doing because she's giving back to her community, especially during this really difficult time. Now, not many people are going outside, but for those few that are, it's for essential work. And I think this is as essential as it gets. She's helping strangers, uh, people that she doesn't even know, get food that they don't have. And I wanted to show her my appreciation by interviewing her, spreading the word to more people such as yourself. And if you want to help her in her cause, you can do so. We'll provide the links. And uh, this is my interview with Christina Ayanyan. Before we start talking about the excellent work you're putting in, I wanted to, um, I may be late to the party by saying this, but I wanted to congratulate you for becoming Miss Boston of 2020. I mean, that's got to be a big deal, right? Thank you. Yeah, I mean, um, and I'm definitely really thankful and lucky to have this opportunity. And just with the title, my whole goal is to serve, and that's what I'm doing. So it's been it's been good so far. It's been a great journey. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now you've also received titles for Miss Massachusetts's Outstanding Teen and Miss Boston Preteen. And pretty soon, if things go accordingly, of course, you will be competing for Miss Massachusetts and winning that. And then you will be competing for Miss America and winning that. I mean, do you ever dream of something like this? This is crazy. Yeah, so I started competing in pageants when I was younger. My mom, um, it was something my mom and I did together growing up. Mm -hmm. And I won the title of Miss Boston Preteen. So growing up, being the actual Miss Boston in the adult age division has always been my dream. And the Miss Massachusetts Outstanding Teen program is kind of like the younger sister to the Miss Massachusetts program. Mm -hmm. So I kind of grew up in this organization from high school and now after college. And growing up in the Miss America organization, but as Miss Massachusetts Outstanding Teen, I focused a lot on hunger and served as the youth ambassador for Project Bread, worked with Feeding America, um, the Walk for Hunger in Boston, um, and just my local food pantries. And so now I'm happy I can translate that to um, being Miss Boston. That's awesome. You're doing a great job so far. So, by cut, by cut, Michevich, like we say. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, one of the things that was highlighted in your Miss Boston competition was you playing the piano. Um, you've been playing piano since you were seven years old. Uh, out of all the pieces that you've played, do you have a favorite? I love playing Armenian pieces. I love Armenian composers. Arno Babajanyan is one of my favorite composers. His Bara Shabat mm -hmm. one of my favorite songs of all time. And I was actually, I auditioned. I was supposed to play in Carnegie Hall a week ago in April, like the second week of April with that song. It was an international piano and strings competition. But unfortunately, that has gotten pushed back to December. But Bon Jovi has a quote, and he says, if you can't do what you do, do what you can. And I live by that. I saw him post that quote when coronavirus was starting. And that kind of translates into my kind of life right now, because I can't do what I was planning on doing, but I'm doing what I can. Now, uh, I did notice that you had a, a duet of Dance Monkey with a friend from China. When I saw that, I'm like, dang, side by side, that was beautiful. How did you guys pull that off? Yeah, so um, Andrew has been my friend since college, and 
we've always wanted to play together in at school, but we went to a business school, so access to instruments it wasn't it wasn't the norm, and he didn't have his violin with him from China, and so it, we just it, it never happened at school. So once we were in quarantine, we thought of the idea: okay, let's play a song and let's kind of connect the world from opposite sides of the world. Let's play a happy song that everyone knows and really just spread happiness through music because music. Doesn't have any borders. Music isn't quarantined, essentially. And so I recorded myself playing the piano, sent it to him. He recorded himself playing the violin over it, put it together, and we made it. Awesome! It was、yeah. so fun. When I saw the finished product, I was so happy. Like that was. I just. I kind of relive myself. Uh, like relive that moment playing it as I'm watching the video, so I love it. It's it's really fun. Yeah, it was really yeah, it was... beautiful. Now, besides playing the piano, some of your other talents include singing, dancing, and one of my favorites, acting. Now, I'm an actor, but I've never been a part of an interactive experience,、uh, or production, rather. Can you tell me a little bit about、uh, Felicity Dane and the Pirate Treasure? Yeah, so Felic- <laughs> Felicity Day in the Pirate Treasure. That was actually the first main role that I had acting. I'm s- you did your homework very well. Oh yeah, I did.、Mm-hmm. That's- Way back,、um, so that was such a fun role to play because that role we had our set scenes outside. The whole, whole production was outside, but the the weekend was. Kind of like a big festival, so we had booths of vendors, and as Felicity Day, I would always be in character, going from each booth, from each vendor, interacting with the crowd, and then we had our scenes that we also performed. So that was a really fun character, and I hope I can be in a production like that again. I love acting, I love performing,、um, I just get, I love entertaining people, but I get a rush performing, so I, I really enjoy it. Do you rather you rather、uh, perform live or would you rather perform on camera? Both. Both. Okay. Nice. Nice.、Um, it's different. It, they're they're very different. I like the live portion. I love musicals, so I get to perform in musicals live,、mm-hmm. and、uh, hopefully it'll turn into on camera in the future. Now, before this whole pandemic thing happened or began in the states, you were helping lead. Uh, fundraising initiatives for Children's Miracle Network hospitals. Can you talk a little bit about what your position is regarding these hospitals and what you're doing to help? Yeah. So the Children's Miracle Network hospitals is a network of hospitals across the United States, and it's the national platform of the Miss America organization. And I've been raising money and volunteering for them since I was a little girl. Since even before I was involved in the Miss America organization, I. I remember growing up in elementary school. I would collect stuffed animals and books with bins outside of my dance studio or outside of preschools and elementary schools. And I would go to these hospitals and visit the kids that couldn't go home for the holidays. And I would bring them that teddy bear or read that children's book with them. And it was it was just like a really heartwarming moment that I had with them, and that kind of stuck with me as I moved into the Miss America organization. And that really kind of connected my childhood. To my adult life, and in quarantine, I've been doing a kind of like a jewelry fundraiser with Touchstone Crystal, where all the profits from sales of for jewelry for Mother's Day jewelry is going towards、uh, Children's Miracle Network and Boston Children's Hospital. Wow, that's awesome! Good job. I'm, I'm <laughs> that's impressive. So, <laughs> thank you. Now, with the rapid spread of this virus, are you able to meet the demand for the increasing amounts of people that need help in your area? I hope so. I mean, I'm contributing any way that I can,、um, and this. Everything that I've been doing has been spreading so fast, and it's been growing so fast. And I'm trying to visit as many places as I can. So、um, every week, I make food shopping trips, and I find different shelters, food banks, and hospitals to visit. So hopefully, this con- well, this is going to continue after coronavirus, but hopefully, this. Initiative gets bigger to ultimately like opening up a nonprofit. That would be the end goal, and having this spread across America and internationally too. Very cool, very cool. And I've noticed that your GoFundMe page has about nine hundred dollars and Venmo、uh, and catering. Can you talk about those a little bit? 
Yeah. So with through the Venmo donations and the GoFundMe, well, originally I started with Venmo donations. And as this was getting bigger and strangers from um, all parts of the world were interested in donating, they don't have access to Venmo. I think America is one of the only countries that uses Venmo very prominently. And so I opened a GoFundMe to allow access to people that aren't in my immediate circle. And so collectively, I've raised over $4,000, which I use on my weekly food shopping trips. And I've partnered with BJ's, who's also donating. I've partnered with hand sanitizing companies who have committed to donating every week. And it branched into partnering with restaurants. So there's kind of a lot of different branches that I'm having with this food drive. So part of it is buying and donating non-perishable foods to food banks and shelters, buying individually wrapped snacks like protein bars, oatmeal bars, mixed nuts, Gatorade, stuff to fuel our healthcare workers and delivering them to hospitals, to the ICUs and emergency rooms. And then another part of it is partnering with restaurants. And so far I've partnered with five restaurants, Ani Catering, Anush Ella, Janna Grill, Phoenix Mediterranean, and Noor Mediterranean Grill. And collectively, on Friday, on April 24th, we donated 150 meals together to Massachusetts General Hospital to their emergency room night shift crew. But these restaurants donate regularly um, every week. Uh, to our healthcare force. So, and that's another kind of side that I'm doing, partnering with these restaurants and delivering meals to our healthcare force. Wow. <laughs> I mean, is there is there anything you can't do? I don't get it, man. That's crazy. <laughs> um, but are are there any are there any people helping you out, like friends, family, or community members? Just the support that I'm getting, the messages that I'm getting from people that I've inspired around the world. Like I'm getting messages from strangers in Australia, in London, Canada, across the U.S. saying, "I like, can you help me organize what you're doing in my city? Or I'll have them send me screenshots that they've joined a COVID relief fund and said that I was their inspiration for starting. So it's really like my whole, I guess, life goal is to promote global citizenship and global citizenship really starts at the local level. And the success of this food drive has really proved that. And the impact that I'm having internationally just proves that. And that's that's all that I could ask for. That's beautiful. Good job. Good job. Now, with the crazy amounts of shortages going around, when you go shopping for food that you donate later, Uh, Are there any specific items that are harder to find than others? I I thought there would be, Mm -hmm. but at these wholesale clubs, they they are constantly getting food. They don't have a limit, at least at BJ's where I go, they don't have a limit. Um, Before I go food shopping, I look at the either the pantries or the shelter's website to look at what foods are most desired or what they need most, or I'll contact them, I'll call them saying, what foods do they need to be donated, and I'll buy accordingly that way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so say I want to help out. I want to I want to donate to the cause. What can I do to help you help others? Thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Well, first, thank you for donating yourself. I ah, really, really appreciated stop, that. Stop. <laughs> um, but you can either Venmo me. Um, my name is at Christina with a K dash Ayanyan. Or go on my GoFundMe It's just food donation drive. Aside from the amazingly generous work that you've done, that that you're still doing, I I hear that you're also a stock market analyst. Is this true? So (laughs) I work at NASDAQ and I'm in the listings team. So I work on IPOs. I support IPOs and listing switches. So companies that are switching from New York Stock Exchange to NASDAQ and companies um, helping companies go from two years out from being public and helping them uh, to become public companies. It's really cool. I love my job. I'm gaining a lot of exposure, especially this is my first job in the real world. But my whole team is great. My SVP has taken me under her wing. I'm just, I'm learning so much from them. So hopefully I can work my way up that way. That's great (laughs) because I was going to ask you, like in this current state of things, what are the stocks that you would consider best buys? See, I get that question all the time. (laughs) But as an exchange, we don't, we're not traders. We don't Mm. trade. Stocks. Um, but even if I did know, I couldn't say that. <laughs> ah, dang it. NASDAQ is watching me right now. <laughs> ah, all right. Well, that's fair enough. Good try. Good try. Yeah. 
we're gonna do rapid fire questions, okay? okay. I want you to answer with the, the first thing that comes to mind. No hesitation, just like boom, boom. All right, you ready? Yeah. Red, blue, or orange? Blue. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Favorite ice cream? Strawberry. Tolma or kufta? Tolma. <laughs> Christmas or Easter? Christmas. When saying the color orange in Armenian, do you say nanjaguin or tsiranaguin? Nanjaguin. Nanjaguin, good. Apric apricots, or ugh, apricots or pomegranates? Pomegranates. Share or system of a down? System of a down. Nice. Oh, you... both. Share too. I love share. Huge share cool. fan. <laughs> uh, would you rather eat diorek for the rest of your life or lamajun for the rest of your life? Lamajun. Nice. I grew up in lamajun. Twizzlers or red vines? Twizzlers. Mr. Bean or Charlie Chaplin? Mr. Bean. Nice. Uh, <laughs> would you rather be a painter that never gets a portrait or a photographer that it's always taking selfies? Pa painter. Nice. Painter. <laughs> Apple or Microsoft? Apple. Uh, New England Patriots, Boston Red Sox, or Boston Celtics? We're title town. I can't pick. I'm a Boston <laughs> girl. <laughs> All. I was a Patriots fan up until Brady left, so I think I'm going to be a, a Buccaneers fan for a while. <laughs> I think half of Boston is too. <laughs> okay. Uh, rain or snow? Snow. Mossies or seas? Mossies, because I eventually want to climb Mossies. Nice. Uh, and the last one, cup noodles or chicken nuggets? Chicken nuggets. <laughs> yeah. Dino nuggets. Dino nuggets. <laughs> that was fun. And Christina was kind enough to play her piano rendition of Tarantella by Moritz Moskowski a piece that she played during the Miss Boston competition and won. because I've been so focused on learning new songs like Dance Monkey. Mm -hmm. So that felt good. <laughs> nice, nice. I want to thank Christina one more time because it really meant a lot for us to have her on the show. And we wish you only the best in all of your future endeavors. Now for our fun view of the day, we have a Hispanic man who claims his name is Gokur. He sells produce from his van and he's just, this guy is so good. Check him out. Yeah. You have to, you have to tell me what your name is. Imanune. Ah, Kwanunicha. Imanune, Gokor Tigran. Gokor Tigran? Gokor Tigran, Imanune. Gorsad Lava. Gorsad Lava. Gorsad Lava. Gorsad Lava, Gorsad Lava. Gorsad Lava, Pop Lava. Gorsad Lava, Pop Lava. Pop Lava, Pop Lava. Ha, but mango ne nor mango ne portetsi shat hamova. Shat hamova mango apja. Shat hamova. Ete meruk che musun? Ete meruk esor che. Esor che. Esor che. Okay, musan kam. Musan kam, okay. Musan kam bere bere gilas. Gilas, oh you have gilas? Gilas ensor dambul. Dambul. Tanz tanz. Tanz elunes, wow. 
Ah, this guy is great. I love him. Well, that was Gokor Tigran. I'm sorry, I can't. I can't stop laughing. His name is Gokor Tigran. Can you imagine? <laughs> Two first names. I love it. And for today's learn of the day, I'm going to be teaching you how to count from 1 to 10 in Armenian. So we have 1, which is Mek. 2, which is Yeshku. 3, which is Yerek. 4, which is Chors. 5, which is Hing. 6, which is Vets. 7, which is Yot. 8, which is Ut. 9, which is In. And 10, which is Thus. So let's go over it together one more time. So we have Mek, Yechku, Yerek, Chors, Hing, Vets, Yot, Ut, In, Thus. You can make a song out of it if you want. Mek, Yechku, Yerek, Chors, Hing, Vets, Yot, Ut, In, Thus. Or the yes, Chogot, Rayem, Yazamanich, Kidem, Tipti. Also, I wanted to mention if you're interested in sponsorship opportunities or you wanted to be a part of the Armenians podcast, go ahead and email us at info at 4D Legacy legacycontent.com and we'll talk business you know what i'm saying <laughs> well that does it for this podcast i want to thank some people up in here up in here i want to thank 4d legacy a media company in san francisco they've been working with me to produce these shows i want to see how long i can keep my hands up in the air they have a new movie coming out titled pride jewel that's uh, slated to be in select theaters by november of this year Guess who's gonna be in it? Moi, moi, I'm gonna be in it. Yeah, so if you don't watch it, dang, it's gonna be a problem. <laughs> you can check out a teaser reel on their website at www.4dlegacystudios.com. They work with a lot of filmmakers and writers, so if you have a project, I mean, <laughs> that may need some assistance, feel free to get in touch with them, duh, at info at 4dlegacycontent.com. They actively review scripts for their next project, so if you want to pitch them an idea, feel free to email them. Jeez, email them like a one minute self taping or of your pitch or something like that. Who knows? If they think the storyline is intriguing, they may contact you. I don't know. Gee. Make sure to let them know you heard it here on the Armenians podcast. That's right. Oh yeah, my hands. I want to thank Armen Dilanchian. Our executive producer, Aya Haja, our marketing director, and Daryl Good of Chrome 7 and original host of the Armenians podcast based out of New York. Uh, most importantly, we want to thank you, our wonderful audience, for taking the time to listen to us. We hope you'll subscribe to our channel and share the episode with friends and family. Yeah, you can also subscribe to Armenians Podcast as mentioned on YouTube channel or iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher platforms. We really appreciate it. <laughs> now on YouTube, when you do uh, subscribe to us, go to 4D Legacy, uh, comma, LLC. That's the name of our channel. Uh, and Armenians Podcast will be found in the video section. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at 4D underscore Legacy. Again, that's the number four, letter D underscore legacy and if you want to email us of course make sure to send us your feedback at info at 4dlegacycontent.com subscribe to the armenians podcast wherever you listen to your favorite podcast and until next time i am sarkis Va wait no this feels wrong you know what i don't know why i'm signing out christina take it away i am christina ayanyan and this has been armenians podcast bye <laughs> <laughs>